aspect everyone in the sanctuary this morning is very familiar with goes something like this. You can please some of the people some of the time. You can please some of the people all of the time. But you can never please all of the people all of the time. And I've heard that in other terms. You can fool some of them some of the time and all of the time. But you're just not going to do it on a consistent basis. Well, I want you to be very aware of that old saying. As we look at our scripture this morning, found in Luke 13, and Jesus we find preaching in the synagogue. And he's preaching on the Sabbath. Hear the story. Luke 13, verse 10. How Luke relates it. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called the when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and she glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And the ruler said to the crowd, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them, but not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or donkey from the stall and leave it away to water it? So ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound to think of it for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. And when he said these things, all of his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. This is the word of God for the people of God. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. That, that, that sounds better. That's kind of like looking at something my grandmother used to give me for Christmas and say, thank you. Then you wonder, what in the sand hill is it? Have you ever noticed that no matter what you do, you cannot please everybody. Somebody, somewhere, is going to criticize your best efforts. And I'm sure every one of you knows somebody, will know somebody like that. Now, that person isn't going to try to do anything significant themselves, but oh, can they criticize. Oh, can they point out the wrong that other people do. And Jesus encountered people like that. Think of the story. He was teaching in the, in the synagogue on Sabbath. And there was a woman there in the synagogue with a spirit that so crippled her for 18 years that she was bent over double and could not straighten up. She didn't know what people's faces looked like. She knew what their toes looked like. And that's how she recognized people because she was bent over and could not stand up straight. And Jesus saw her, and he didn't wait for her to speak. He was filled with compassion. And he called her over, and he said, Ma'am, you are set free from your ailment. And then he laid his hands on her, and when he did, she immediately stood up straight and began to praise God. That's the part he pleased. But over here on the other side, is the leader of the synagogue. You can please some of the people, but you can't please them all. And over here is the leader of the synagogue, and he is indignant because Jesus had cured this lady of her, this, her ailment on the Sabbath. And he kept saying to the crowd, he kept riling them up and saying to them, there are six days 
on which work should be done. Come on, those days and be cured, but don't come on the Sabbath. And the Lord answered him, and I'm going to read it again, but I want you to hear the sneer, the disdain in Jesus' voice. You know, Jesus had righteous indignation. And he had cause for righteous indignation in a number of places in the scripture. And he looks and he says, hypocrite. Now, I never learned to curl my lip. I wish I had ever sometime learned to curl my lip when I wanted to say something sneering or when I really wanted to make a point. But I have this mental image of Jesus saying, you hypocrite, and his lip kind of curling. And he keeps on going, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to get it water? Well, ought not this woman who's a daughter of Abraham and whom Satan has bound for 18 years, ought not she be set free from this bondage, even if it is the Sabbath day? Well, when he said this, those that were on the other side, those that were against him, really were put to shame. But the rest of the crowd was delirious with joy, and they rejoiced at all of the wonderful things that he was doing. Now think about it. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? It's not the miracle that's so amazing. It's not the fact that Jesus healed the woman. What's interesting is the reaction to that miracle. Here Jesus had just healed this poor little lady who was all bent over. He helped her stand straight and tall for the first time in 18 years. And the leader of the synagogue, the pious one, the most holy religious man in the synagogue, how did he react to it? He criticized it. He criticized it. Well, First of all, we ought not be surprised that this criticism came from the leader of the synagogue. Now, don't misunderstand me. It could have been the chairman of the board or the chairman of the elders just as easily as it could have been the leader of the synagogue. Religious affiliation here, what you call yourself, has nothing to do, it's not a factor. The fact that we want to know and pay attention to is this man was the top dog. He held the power. He's who people listened to. People bowed and scraped to this man until, until Jesus came along. And Jesus changed the whole landscape. This leader of the synagogue, probably, certainly, there is no doubt, he never healed anybody. And don't you think that this leader of the synagogue was probably feeling just a little bit threatened by this upstart young man named Jesus? Don't you think he was probably just a little bit envious? There's nothing like Having a person come along in the same path that you follow that's a little bit smarter, that's a little bit more capable, that might be a little bit more attractive, and people start finding fault with you because this other person has come along. And envy and jealousy begins to grow. Let me tell you, folks, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know, envy can be a monster, a monster in people's lives. It happens in families. It happens among friends. And believe it or not, it can happen in church. People get envious. And you know what happens when people get envious? The second step, they become critical. And they pick. And they point out. And if that doesn't satisfy them, at least in Jesus' time, think about the high priests, 
Think about all that went on because Jesus is on his way for the last time to, to Jerusalem. In Jesus' time, crucifixion is the next step. So we should not be at all surprised that this criticism of Jesus was voiced by the leader of the synagogue. And we ought not be surprised that he chose religious grounds for making his attack. You know, people, me, you, we're strange. People hate. People hate in the name of love. People kill in the name of peace. People oppress other people in the name of holiness. And if we're honest, and I think all of us in this room will be honest about this, some of the greatest evil in the world has been perpetrated and still is perpetrated by people who are acting under the cloak of religion. That's a sad comment. But I think there's a lot of truth to it. The leader of the synagogue couldn't just come right out and say, hey, I resent this young know-it-all. He's taking away my authority. He couldn't come out and do that. He had to be a little more subtle. So he kept saying to the crowd, there are six days that you can heal. Come on, let's do it then. But don't do it on the Sabbath day. Well, I want you to think back in your life. And Remember that song? Remember that movie? Do it all week long. You can cure. You can work. You can do what you want. That's what that leader in the synagogue was saying. But oh my goodness, don't heal somebody who has never stood straight for 18 years. You know, don't do it on the Sabbath. Just don't do it on the Sabbath. Great old song. You can kiss me on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, all the other days of the week. You can cure me. You can cure me on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Don't do it on a Saturday. Now back then, that was Sunday on Friday to Sunday on Saturday. Follow with me, you know. You know, there are some of us today that remember Blue Laws. How many of you all remember Blue Laws? How many of you remember the fights that went on as the Blue Laws were slowly slowly repealed and the world became open to buying and doing anything you wanted to on a Sunday and we wish sometimes that we had more reverence today for the Sabbath but the legalists in Jesus time had let things get out of hand and they interpreted the Sabbath so strictly that that poor lady nobody could be healed on the Sabbath and that thought was totally repulsive it was totally anathema to Jesus. And he said so in no uncertain terms. He didn't try to be politically correct. He didn't care who he offended. He said what he thought, and it was the truth. It was the truth. So let's stop and let's see what do we have right this minute up to this point. You know, we have a religious leader, Criticizing Jesus for doing things on the Sabbath, but the things that he was doing were good things. And then there's something else we need to note. The criticism, even though, even though it was unjustified, and even though many, many, many rejoiced with Jesus, it took its toll. The leader of the synagogue in this story looks pretty silly for his criticism. He was petty in his criticism. He was scared, so he criticized. And Luke sums it up with these words. Jesus' opponents were put to shame and the entire crowd was rejoicing 
at all the wonderful things that he was doing. But still, the constant barrage, the constant backbiting, 